We're going to be answering some questions about functions and also trying to see if we can get the inverse of those functions as well. So in question one, we're going to take a look at this function here. So we have x squared minus 1. Now in part A, I'm going to try and sketch it first of all. So how are we going to sketch this? So it looks like we have x squared in it, so it's going to be a parabola. Okay, so if I want to draw x squared minus 1, it's going to be the parabola, my normal one, but it's going to be shifted down one unit. Okay, so hopefully we already know how to sketch these. Now in part B, it's asking me, okay, to find the largest possible domain of my function fx so that an inverse function exists. Okay, now will an inverse function exists if my function is one-to-one? -one? Okay, so if my original function is a one-to-one -one function, then the inverse function will exist. Okay, currently this is not a one-to-one -one function. Okay, this is actually a many-to-one function. Okay, so for, I have multiple um, x values that give me the same y value. So this is not one-to-one. -one. So to make this one-to-one, -one, I want you to take a look at the answer first of all. We have x is smaller than or equal to zero, or x is greater or equal to zero. So what that is saying is, at x equals to zero right here, if I take only this part, okay, so only this half, then it's going to be one-to-one, -one, correct? Only this part of the graph is one-to-one. -one. Now if we discard this graph and we only consider this graph, then this part of the graph is also just one-to-one. -one. Okay, so we can take either side, but we don't want it as a whole parabola, we just want uh, one half of the other. Okay, that way it is a one-to-one. -one. Okay, that's why my two domains, uh, which I can make this one-to-one, -one, is going to be x is smaller or equal to zero, or x is greater or equal to zero. Okay, so to make it one-to-one, -to -one, which means it has an inverse. Okay, so in other notation, we can also write, write it like this. Okay, so depending on your textbook or your school, I want you to write your appropriate notation. Now let's move on to the next question. So in this question, we have another parabola, but in this question, it's going to be translated a little bit differently. So hopefully we already know how to sketch this graph. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do in part A. So I want you to try and sketch it. Okay, so it's going to be a parabola that's going to be shifted to the right by one unit. So that's the easy part. Now in part B, okay, very similar question. It's asking me, um, find the largest possible domain of this function so that its inverse function exists. Okay, so again, that's the same uh, uh, similar question as last as the last one. Okay, so we're going to try and make this somehow one-to-one. -one. Currently, there, there will be no inverse function because this is many to one. So in order to make this one-to-one, -one, we said, okay, we're only going to take one half of the graph. Either this half or we can take this half. Okay, that way, it would be a one-to-one. -one. Now in this question, at the middle, it's x equals to one. So my largest possible domain is gonna be my two options here. So x is smaller than negative, sorry, x is smaller than one, which is just this half of the graph, and x is greater or equal to one, which is this part of the graph. Okay, so there are my two options. Now, uh, they could be both right, but if we actually look at the question carefully, it says find the largest possible domain. Now between these two domains, uh, the one on the left is a little bit bigger. Okay, so x is smaller than one, or smaller or equal to one, is larger than my other domain. Okay, so that will be my answer. Now the reason why that is larger is because um, if we just consider x equals to zero the center, okay, then this domain will be a little bit bigger than this domain. Maybe by one unit, but still it is a little bit bigger. So that's my answer. Now let's take a look at question three. Okay, so in question three, we have a function that is a hyperbola, okay? And in part A, they will tell us to sketch it. So we're gonna try and sketch this function. So again, this is very basic stuff. Hopefully we already know how to sketch parabolas. Okay, so it's gonna be a normal parabola. However, it's going to be shifted to the right by one unit. Okay, which means my new asymptote will be x equal to one. Okay, so we sketched it. So that's my function. Now, if we actually answer some inverse questions, in part B, it asks me again to find the largest possible domain I can have of my function in order for my inverse function to exist. Well, for an inverse function to exist, I want my original one to be one to one. And if you actually look at this, uh, sorry, if you look at this hyperbola, this hyperbola is already one to one. So this is already a one to one function. Okay, which means this already has an inverse. Okay, so if it tells me to find the largest possible domain for this to have an inverse, which it already does, then I'm just going to take the original domain of that function. Okay, so x cannot equal to one. Okay, simply because that's the domain of my original graph. Okay, x can't equal to one because we can't have a zero denominator. So that's my domain, and there will be no further restriction because this is already one to one. So we don't need to do any. We don't need to do any restricting the domain. Okay, this is already one to one. So an inverse function exists. 
Now in question four, okay, we have a little bit different looking function. So fx equals two, the square root of four minus x squared. And part A, again, tells us to sketch it. So how are we gonna sketch this? Now, if you actually look at it carefully, we should be a little bit familiar in that this is a semicircle, okay? So how are we gonna draw semicircles? This is how we draw it, okay? So it's got a radius of two, and of course, it's a positive, so we're gonna take the positive half of my semicircle. Okay, part B. So find the largest possible domain of this function so that the inverse exists. So is this currently a one-to-one -one function? Okay, that's what we want. Well, actually, no, it's a many-to-one function right now. Okay, so for this one y value, I will have two corresponding x values. Okay, that means many-to-one. I don't want that. I only want one-to-one. -one. Okay, so it's very similar to the parabola questions we did in the first uh, for the first two questions, okay? So like the parabola ones, we can only take a certain part of this graph for it to be one to one, okay? And that's what we want to find. We're to try and restrict this domain so that we can make this one to one. So let's take a look at the answer. So it tells me um, it's going to be either in between negative two and zero, or it's going to be in between zero and two. So what that means is it's either going to take this half, or it's going to take this half, okay? So if I take it into halves, then the graph looks like this, will be one to one. Okay, so I can take either one for it to be one to one. Okay, and in different notation, this is how we can write it. Okay, so we just answered some uh, questions regarding to inverse, inverse functions.